सो हेयर आई एम विद मैथमेटिकल रीजनिंग फॉर जे मेन्स टू के सेवनटीन एक्चुअली आई हैव रिटर्न इट ऑल अर्लियर सो दैट इट बिकम्स अ स्मॉल वीडियो एंड यू कैन वॉच मोर क्विकली सो लेट इज गेट स्टार्ट मैथमेटिकल स्टेटमेंट इट कैन बी आइदर ट्रू और फोर्स बट नेवर अनसर्टेन विच इज थ्री प्लस टू इक्वल्स फाइव दिस इज अ ट्रू वी नो इट राइट बट थ्री प्लस टू इक्वल्स फोर इज अ फोर्स स्टेटमेंट दीज बोथ आर एट एक्चुअली अ मैथमेटिकल स्टेटमेंट बट इफ इट इज अनसर्टेन लाइक एक्स प्लस वाई इक्वल्स फाइव which is not known to us if it is true or false so this is not a mathematical statement got it and we denote as a mathematical statement statement by letters like alphabets like p q s t negation of t negation of s and so on uh, negation negation of a statement if p is a statement then of p is just uh, opposite of that or converse of that like true makes negation of p as false and false to true true a compound statement can be formed by joining two or more of those of these statements for example p or q p and q p or q q r p implies q or r these are some of the examples of compound statements how we form compound statements by uh, these things these connectors some of the basic connectors are and whose symbol is like this and i have written it such that you can remember it easily ki which symbol means what this is an and symbol and this is the another connector which means or now what are these what they do is you can understand them easily by this truth table or by an analogy or an example um, if two questions are given to us and it is connected by and question number 1 and question number 2 has to be attempted which will contain 5 marks each then we'll get 10 marks only when we attempt both of them right and if it is given that question number 1 or question number 2 has to be attempted then we'll get 10 marks whenever we attempt one of them uh, will we get 10 marks if we attempt one of the questions no because each of them contain 5 marks so false if i say if i don't attempt the question number 2 then again i'll not get 10 marks false But if I attempt both of them, I'll get ten marks. True. If I don't don't attempt any of them, I'll get zero. Again, false. For this one, look, each of them connect uh, contain ten marks. So if I attempt only one of them, I'll get ten marks. Look, one of them is attempted, one of them is attempted, one of both of them is the them are attempted. Uh, I'll be correcting one question and will give marks accordingly. So you'll get. A true in that that connection too, in that condition too, and if you attempt none of them, then you will get a false. That is it. Implications. There are two kinds of implications. If P then Q, and another one is P if and only if Q. They are sort of connectors, and you can easily remember them by this huge and very important truth table. now let us see what happens if p is true and q is true what will be negation of p negation of p it will it will be just negation of true i'll write it i'll write it directly it will be false now p implies q is same as p if p then q this means p implies q and this p if and only if q means p if and only if q this is how we represent them mathematically now let us back to the truth table okay we were here p implies q we can write it also as negation of p or q we have just read about how to use this kind of connector which is or with an analogy i did it that if we have two questions and we have to attempt one of them there is a symbol or which means one of them has to be attempted right so if one of them is already attempted that is t q and negation of p will not be dealing with this we'll hide it hide, we'll hide this and we'll do it now negation of p that is f 
or t one of them is attempted so what will be our answer true we'll get marks right if there are two questions and we have to attempt one of them then we'll get 10 marks right another one is this is true this is false so we'll get it as false now both of them are not attempted will we get marks no of course not if this is false this is true then this will be true now hide it again and see if both of them are attempted that this also comes out to be true and if we take this as false and this one also as false it will be true that is one of them one of the question has been attempted so what will we get of course will we get we will get 10 marks that is true similarly negation of q will i'll write it first so that we achieve our target soon negation of q or p if i have attempted one of the questions what will i get a true if i attempted both of them i'll still get true if i attempted none of them i'll get false if i attempted one of them i'll get true this was simple isn't it this is an amazing method and you should remember it right and the another kind of connector is p if and only if q which is actually a sum of both of them that is we have to just connect both of them with an and sign this is also an important connector and we'll see it how it works now look uh, this is another type of example like uh, question number 1 and question number 2 are there and we have to attempt both of them to get 10 marks and we are uh, only we are taking true only if we get 10 marks note for any marks 5 or 0 if uh, both of them are attempted we'll get a true if we have and attempt one of them will we get 10 marks no no yes so that was easy right it is seriously important and this method is one of the best to remember these implications coming to tautology which is also an important topic and we have an example here if i put p as t negation of p will become f and you see it will come out to be true right p or negation of p which we which means we have to attempt one of the questions true if i put it this this will also become true so this is an example of a tautology which means our output will always be true see and fallacy will be like this if i say this then we'll get a false and for this condition we'll get a false again so this means a false output always this was easy isn't it we have to attempt both of the questions and if we have attempt one of them we'll not get 10 marks and true here is only when we get a 10 mark note 5 for any one of them right we have some notations here contra positive which is exactly means the same as the statement like p implies q can also be written as negation of q implies negation of p like if i p if i take p as true q as false then negation of q negation of this negation of a false becomes a true right we'll get true true implies negation of p which is f and what we have here to implies false so these are basically the same contra positive means just writing it another way now we have contradiction which contradicts with the statement like p implies q then its contradiction will be q implies negation of p here the meaning will be changed as you can see this symbol is not present here and converse converse is like p implies q and the converse of it is q implies p these are just some notations which are important here we have the last part of the chapter which consists of some laws which you have already studied somewhere in sets or relation chapters p or q the same as q or p 
and we can use this connector too which is and p or in brackets q or r can also be written as p or q or r we have just shifted the brackets and this connector can also be used now this one is a bit important as compared to the above ones which is distributive law what we will do is what we will do is we will distribute this connector among the uh, uh, the one which are in the brackets see p and q or p and r what we have done is just distributed this connector in the brackets they are all similar you can click a picture for this to just see the similarities in other similar laws now this one is having a trick this one have a trick consider three sets t p and c this set consists all values which are true this consists some of them as true and this set consists of all the values which are false now for this connector which is or choose the set which is larger and for this curve which is and choose the set which is smaller look p or t choose the set which is larger which one is larger t so the answer comes out to be t in p and t choose the set which is smaller which one is smaller p p comes out to be the answer p or c which one is larger p p comes out to be the answer p and c which one is smaller c so c comes out to be the answer so this was the trick easily remember tpc tpc another law is this which is very easily understood that is negation of c which is all false can negation will be all true and negation of all true will be false and if we use it double we'll get a p again and this example we have already discussed earlier this is this just the <clears throat> that we have used in tautology and fallacy quite simple and this is another law which is also quite simple as we have seen already in sets and relation chapter now this is quite important law which you need to understand this is just negation of p or q that is conjunction this symbol is also known as conjunction and this symbol is also known as disjunction now negation of p or q will be negation of p and negation of q what will happen is just this symbol will convert into this and this will get each with them this symbol converts to this now we have this one which is also important and is just a deduction of this one that is p implies q's negation as we have already discussed that p implies q can be written as negation of p or q right if now if we take negation this is just a case of this one which comes out to be this now negation of p if and only if q and we have already discussed that p if and only if q can be written as p implies q and q implies p now taking negation of them we will change the symbol first with this theorem or this law and will come out to be this and if you want to see how this comes out to be this i have another video in which i have discussed some more examples of previous year j equations and with this example too so have fun this was all required to know click a picture of it click other videos pictures and you'll get three three or four pictures at most and that is all the syllabus of mathematical reasoning in je means so stay tuned thank you